In this episode, we're looking at how to learn, practice, and improve your alternate picking technique. Hello and welcome to Axe Toots, the show where we explore guitar playing and music theory to take our playing to the next level. I'm your host, Ray George. This video is again kind of following on from the video I uploaded two weeks previous on creating an efficient practice routine. One of the categories I suggested you include was technique. So I wanted to make this video as an example and just thought that alternate picking is one of those things that everyone should have at least a basic grasp of that applies to both acoustic and electric guitar. Whether you want to simply play melody lines as smoothly and clearly as possible, or if you want to play as fast as possible, you need to have a really good grasp of alternate picking. If you're not sure what I mean by that, it's basically when you use both the down and the upstroke to play a note while playing single notes. The first thing that you should look at is the way in which you hold the pick. Although there aren't any right or wrong ways as such, making an effort to hold it in a way that is most functional and economical is going to be extremely helpful to developing good technique. In my own experience, and just looking at how other people do it who have good technique, the best placement of the pick between your fingers is to have your index finger kind of curled, then place the pick on top of the first section or first knuckle, then place your thumb on top of that to keep it in place. There should be as little of the pick as possible sticking out of your fingers, maybe about five to eight millimeters. The less the better since it gives you more accuracy and less surface area, which means less resistance, which will make smoother and faster picking a little bit easier. Once you've got that, it's time to look at how to place your hand on the guitar because you need to have some sort of anchor point in order to or in order for your hand to automatically find the string that you want to play without having to look down or even to think about what your hand is doing. The way that I and I think most people achieve this is by resting the edge of the base of your hand on or around the bridge of the guitar. That's where the strings meet the body. Again, this can be quite personal and vary slightly from one person to another. So just as long as your hand isn't floating around and you're not anchoring with your little finger below the strings, you should be fine. After you've got all that, you should be in a good position to start picking. So we need to look at how to move that whole assembly. The key thing here is most, if not all of the movement should come from your wrist. A common mistake made especially by guitarists that play mostly rhythm is to move from the elbow, but that's not very accurate at all and will also tire your arm out very quickly. It makes playing fast and more complex rhythms pretty much impossible. Another common mistake is to use the thumb and finger that are holding the pick, which although is going to be more accurate than the elbow, it's not going to have great endurance since there's pressure already there from holding the pick and it's not going to be as easy to develop good speed. Moving from the wrist is the perfect combination of accuracy and having the ability to keep it loose so that you can play quite quickly for extended periods of time without seizing up. Obviously, if this is a new technique to you or you're changing from what you're used to, the feeling might be a little bit foreign, but with dedicated practice, it'll soon become second nature. And that brings us to the final part of this video, practicing, improving or speeding up your alternate picking. I don't have a specific exercise for this, as that's not how I picked it up. It's simply a case of applying it to whatever scales, exercises or songs that you're currently practicing. And if you're more of a beginner or you just haven't learned, learned any scales or single note playing yet, I would suggest that you learn and use the chromatic scale as an exercise for your alternate picking. I explained the chromatic scale in the first of these lesson videos, so you can find that in uh, season one, episode one. So once you have your scale or riff or whatever it is that you're working on, use a metronome or a drum machine if you like and set it to a speed that you can comfortably play at. Once you think it's perfect and at that speed, move the metronome up by 5 BPM and repeat. While you're doing this, as well as keeping a good form as we already discussed, pay attention to keeping your right hand or wrist nice and loose. Tensing up is as you get faster is only going to impair your technique. If it does start to tense up a bit, just shake it off a bit before continuing to practice. So hopefully from this video, you can see how relatively simple it is to build up a good alternate picking technique. Once you've got the general form down, it's all about practice, practice, practice. 
If you found this helpful, please hit that like button. Even if you already um, had a grasp of this technique, you can often find something new or understand something in more depth by hearing different iterations of the topic. And that's why it'd be awesome if that's you to share with everyone your tips on developing and improving this technique down in the comment section. And for everyone else, if you have any queries, comments, questions, or suggestions or requests, feel free to post them down in the comment section too. And if you feel like that you could do some more personalized help with your guitar playing, I'm currently offering one-to-one -one lessons over Skype. You can find details over at my website. Um, and if this is one of the first of my videos that you're watching, I'd like to welcome you to my channel. I post videos like these as well as covers, performances and gear demo reviews every week. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date.